I'm pretty excited to talk about accessory units, and I'm also pretty excited to be joined by Rogine, who is our Frontier technical expert. So please feel comfortable in asking us questions so that you know exactly what accessory units are right for your applications in your lab. But here we begin with a picture of the Frontier 3030 micro furnace, and it's a great capability, as we know, for chromatography applications. However, accessory units really augment this performance because they save time, they improve chromatography, and they can perform specific analysis. But before we get into the actual accessories, I think it warrants us to do a little review of the pyrolyzer in general. So here's the by 3030D on top of our GCMS, interfacing directly with that inlet. And as we know, pyrolysis adds an element of sample introduction to chromatography and mass spectral detection. And this sample introduction is a micro furnace that can go up to temperatures 500, 600, 1000 C, breaking down polymers into smaller constituents through thermolysis. And these pyrolysates, these smaller constituents, then go travel through the GCMS and can be analyzed. This is a really great application or a really great tool for industries like the polymer industry and many industries as well. And the micro furnace can be temperature programmed. So you can ramp the temperature on your sample while feeding all of those evolved gases directly through an inert tube to your MS and you get a nice thermal profile of your sample. We call this EGA analysis. Or you can similarly ramp the temperature on your program, or excuse me, on your sample and get a thermo, uh, excuse me, pyrogram full of your pyrolysates with a separation column. And of course, you can always flash pyrolyze it at one single temperature and get all the pyrolysates that way as well. And you can also thermally slice, do different th thermal desorption regions to get heart cutting zones. So this is what we call heart cutting. As you can see, we can get chromatograms of different slices, thermal slices of your sample. So this pyrolyzer, as we can see, is a very beneficial tool and already is really beneficial for characterizing samples such as polymers. But we can augment the performance of pyrolyzers even further with Frontier's series of accessories. So these six accessories are what we will be discussing today. And by the end of this presentation, you will understand how each accessory works, what it does, what are some of the applications that we could use it for, and how it's configured with respect to the pyrolyzer, with respect to your GCMS, and how they can work with one another as well. So let's begin with the most obvious accessory, and that is the AutoShot Auto Sampler. There's not much explanation needed as far as how much auto samplers have been a convenience to us already in chromatography, but here is me manually injecting a sample into the pyrolyzer. That's all good and dandy, but with an auto sampler right on top of your pyrolyzer, now we can automate up to 48 samples in the 48 slot carousel. It goes without saying that auto sampling really is for any application. It's an everyday item and everyday accessories. So I highly recommend having an auto sampler for pyrolysis use. And by the way, all of the temperature programs that we were talking about earlier, the auto sampler, the auto shot can handle this. So you can set up different temperature programs and stuff and come back the next day to your runs. And that's really the benefit of auto shot. Another kind of everyday accessory, personally for me, I use every day is the microjet cryotrap. And cryotrapping is exactly as it sounds. This is where we trap analytes using liquid nitrogen, in our case, cryo. And cryotrapping delivers liquid nitrogen in some capacity to a small section to the head of your separa separation column. And this allows analytes to be trapped there at a temperature of negative 196 degrees C. And by the way, nitrogen gas is also being sent here. So it dissipates any excess liquid nitrogen for efficient cooling. And efficient cooling also means efficient heating back up with the GC oven ramp temperature program. So that's really nice. You can efficiently cool that small section of the column without affecting the temperature of the rest of the oven or the rest of the separation column. So let's look at an example. Here's a thermal desorption of a meteorite sample with and without cryotrapping. And with cryotrapping, we can get some light gases as well as acetone low boiling point compounds. This makes a lot of sense because when we think about a GC oven ramp temperature program, it usually starts at 30 or 40 degrees C. And this is still higher than the boiling point of many compounds. 
And this really helps with trapping, especially in pyrolysis applications when we're thinking about a hot pyrolyzer or maybe a lengthy thermal desorption time. Trapping these analytes that are particularly vulnerable to being lost is a nice application to have. And before we start thinking that maybe that this is for particularly for volatiles types analysis, the MJT is definitely for polymers applications as well. Some examples include here in PP and PE, looking at degradation products like methyl acrylic, methyl methacrylate, acetones, acetic acid. These are common degradation products in PPPE, looking at additives like antioxidants, looking at solvents or residual monomer, in this case, a PVP sample, or perhaps diluents and residual volatiles and other coding samples, donors, catalyst supports, precursors and reagents. These are all best captured with MJT. And then here we have a PVC sample. PVC and PTFE and some other polymers, they can break down into very simple compounds like hydrochloric acid because of their simple backbone. And it's nice to have a chromatogram where you can get all your heavies, your additives from phthalates and plasticizers, as well as your HCl from your PVC backbone, all in one chromatogram with the MJT. So I really like the MJT. It improves detection of low boiling point compounds. It also improves peak shape because again, we're allowing the analyte to see a much lower temperature program. And for some analytes, that means it's gonna travel through the column in a more efficient band, thus improving peak shape. And by the way, the MJT can be used with the pyrolyzer or without the pyrolyzer. Just make sure that you talk to us so you can get the right model should you want to use it with the pyrolyzer on a separate GC with a liquid auto injector as well. <clears throat> so I really like the MJT. I think it really benefits characterization especially when you're dealing with a lot of unknowns, it's uh, you don't want to miss a particular analyte in, an, in your sample. Something else that is very much an everyday tool, very much an every moment tool is the Vent-Free GC MS adapter. And the Vent-Free GC MS adapter, besides being a little bit of a mouthful, is an inert line that runs between the end of your column and your MS, and it restricts flow of air to the MS, or really restricts flow. So when we look at the GC oven, that interface from the end of the column to the MS. And when we're thinking about moving the column or changing columns, every time we remove that column nut from the MS, we're of course going to introduce a huge gaping hole, allowing air water into the MS and breaking the vacuum. And thus, as we know, that means that we have to vent every time and then pump it back down, check for air water. This takes a lot of time and is quite tedious. But with a restrictor, now you can swap out columns quite easily and it only takes the time of maybe cooling the inlet so you don't burn your fingers when you're changing the column nut and the time it takes for you to just swap out the columns. So this is a huge time saver for me. I very much recommend the VFA. It definitely allows easy switching with the column whether you wanna switch from EGA column to a regular separation column, or you wanna swap out different columns, try a polar column with a non-polar column based on your analytes. And also, as we know, as we can see, GCMS adapter, the VFA can be used with a pyrolyzer or it can be used without a pyrolyzer. It's just a line that you can install yourself, in fact, and it's at the price point of maybe a few consumable items that you would budget for your lab anyways, and you can buy it on our online store, as you can see here. So it makes a lot of sense to have the VFA on any GCMS, whether that has a pyrolyzer on it or not. I'm certainly convened by it. I no longer have willpower to change <laughs> columns with, by venting and pumping. The VFA has certainly convened me when I'm doing projects like that. We have arrived at multifunctional splitless dumpler, the MFS. The MFS really does three major functions, and that is solvent cutting, splitless pyrolysis, and back flushing. And it does this by using a pre-column. So the MFS can act as a pump, and this draws away flow from the inlet and allows carrier gas flow rate to increase. And the pump can also excess, excuse me, Pump can also cut away any excess solvent so that you can get your solvent peak without having it overcasting your chromatogram. So in typical litless pyrolysis, 
because we have an inlet flow rate that's kind of low, you don't want secondary reaction products that may come arise from that. And the MFS really helps with splitless pyrolysis, getting more on column without the unnecessary secondary byproducts of splitless pyrolysis. And solvent cutting is also very beneficial too. I can see this being really applicable for something like microplastics analysis when we want some trace microplastics or plastics on column, more on column with splitless pyrolysis, or when we're dealing with a variety of different matrices or extraction methods where we're dealing with solvents, we can cut that out. That's going to be really nice for those types of applications. And MFS can also provide flow, and this flow is going to go out through the column and then also directly out of the pre-column out the split vent. And this back flushing is usually activated in the later half of the chromatogram, whereas the previous splitless and pump is activated in the earlier half. And with back flushing, we're going to flush out any heavies out of your chromatogram. So in this example, we have polyethylene C40 and above. It's not really necessary for us to see that to characterize the sample, but we can flush that out and we're not having that getting hung up on the column because sometimes C40s and above, they can struggle a little bit, even in a really hot 300 degree oven to kind of push through to the column. So back flushing is really nice for doing that. And I, again, I can see this really used in microplastics applications. Again, thinking about the different matrix that it may be in. Also running a series of microplastic samples without having to worry about carryover and contamination, you get nice clean runs every time. Or maybe you're looking for a lighter polymer in a heavier polymer matrix. Back flushing is really nice for that as well. So the MFS is really great for reducing contamination to the system and doing splitless pyrolysis and solvent cutting. And of course, splits is really nice for when you're trying to look for trace plastics, such as microplastics, and you're trying to get more on column for that. Kind of in line or kind of in the same theme of purging, like the MFS is the selective sampler. And this accessory is really used in hard cutting. And it provides a purge gas to purge your way unwanted cuts of a thermal slice. So let's look at a regular thermal desorption. You're going to have flow going in from your cup, from your sample, into the separation column, of course. So you can get a nice chromatogram of your sample. But if you don't want a certain cut, you can have a purge gas go through and push out that cut. So you don't have to collect that. You don't have to waste your time collecting that chromatogram. And then you can allow the flow back again to collect zone C. You can pick and choose which thermal slices that you want to keep and which one you don't want to keep. And that is called hard cutting. And that's why selective sampler is really a time saver for hard cutting types of analysis. And it's, as applications wise, really it's useful for any type of analysis where you're going to be doing hard cutting. We're now going to get into a more specific type of analysis with the micro UV irradiator or UV irradiators in general. And the UV irradiator is, allows you to test samples in UV and in air. And it does this by delivering an optic fiber cable with a UV light directly to the sample in the pyrolyzer. So a lot of us in the polymer industry, we have to test our samples or test our resin against the weather, against sun and UV UV irradiation, <laughs> and you can sit with your sample outside in the sun for a long time, months on end, to see how they react or withstand weather, or you could just you know, condense all that time and do it in your eight hour time shift with the UV irradiator. So let's look at an example of that. So UV additives, absorbers, HALs, um, hindered alumine light stabilizer additives, these are added to polymers, acrylic coatings, things that are going to be outside so that it can prevent UV degradation of your polymer. And you can see the performance of these UV additives with the UV radiator after one hour, 10 hour exposure. So condensing that time that, it, that you would have had to spend outside under the sun or something like that. Here's an example of high impact polystyrene that can be possibly in a microwave, maybe in a fridge or a television exposed to other types of UV irradiation. And with the UV 
on, we can see a lot of some of the off-gassed the compounds as an effect of UV exposure in air for polystyrene. So I really like the UV irradiator to test the effects of weathering and UV on your sample. And this can be automated and it is recommended to use with cryo trapping. So UV is really great in testing weathering your samples. And by the way, you don't have to test the UV test UV exposure of your sample outside and then bring it to your sampler. It's all happening inside of your pyrolyzer. And then you can thermally desorb out any of the byproducts of UV exposure in one fell swoop. There is also a lot of options with the UV. So please do talk to us so you can get the right type of UV irradiator for your application. It's something else that tests how a sample may behave in real life is the carrier gas selector. So the carrier gas selector really allows the atmosphere in the furnace to be changed from helium to air, or it can be other gases as well, uh, methane, nitrogen, oxygen, but we will talk about it in the context of air. As we know, pyrolysis occurs in an in inert atmosphere in helium, so it's nice to be able to test your sample under thermal duress, but in a real life environment, such as in air or whatever gases you have. So let's look at an example of polystyrene EGA in air versus in helium. We can see that in inert atmosphere, polystyrene evolves at much higher temperatures and with air you have degradation at much earlier temperatures. That's a nice observation that we can have with the carrier gas selector. And then we can also see what are some of the byproducts of polystyrene being pyrolyzed in, in air versus in helium. And in air, we can see a lot more rise of oxygenated compounds, and these are going to come from the oxygen that it reacts with in the pyrolyzer with, um, with the heat, of course. So that's kind of nice. Polycarbonate or epoxy resins, this is for our semiconductors or construction people. Polycarbonate sometimes is a composite resin with epoxy. And here in the first chromatogram in helium, we can see the bisphenol from the epoxy breaking down and the smaller constituents of that as well. And in air, we see the rise of carbon dioxide because it's reacting with the oxygen in the environment. And then our bisphenol is breaking down into smaller constituents. So it definitely behaves differently in different environments. And it's nice to see how your polymer behaves in, say, reactors, say in molders and injection molders and processing equipment and things like that. So that's a nice option to have with the carrier gas selector without any dangerous plumbing on your end, of course. And you can learn what temperatures that your sample decomposes in air or what gas that you choose. And you can also observe the decomposition products of your sample under any of the temperatures you so choose. And I see this being very applicable in very much many industries, of course, where you want to test your sample in different environments under thermal duress and also in academia. I definitely know of at least one application in which they're testing samples for firefighting, for example, at the onset of a fire when there's oxygen available versus later in the fire when it's super hot and there's no oxygen, it's closer to a pyrolysis type experiment. So I do like that real life application that we can get with some of these accessory units, especially now that we live in a very polymer world. So, okay, yeah, I like that. I like how we're ending on a good note there with some real life applications testing our samples in a very controlled environment, just right on top of our GC. So that's really nice, good note to end on. By the way, you can configure your system with the accessories that you see fit in the way that makes sense for your application. And of course, you can slap an auto sampler on this so you can automate whether you want a thermal cut, you don't want it, you want a cryo trap, don't cryo trap, which, cry, which one you want to back flush or not, just can, program that all in, automate it, come back to your experimental results the next day. So that's really nice to have with this. And I've also stopped here at the configuration that's recommended by Frontier for microplastics applications. And they also supplement this type of application with calibration kits, quantification softwares, liners, and columns. If this is something of interest to you, do reach out to us as well.